All right, Sky Squad, we are back in the building on this good Tuesday afternoon with just a little bit of tea time. You know what I'm saying? We're going to be doing a little hit it and quit it news today. As always, I got to do a little self promo. Make sure you guys are able to download or pre order, I should say, my new book, The Wickedest Wives. Book two in the series is called A Vicious Reality, and as of today, it is available for pre-order. Click on that, or click in the link in the description down below. All right, so let's talk about Portia, Warsha, and Simon. There is more tea, and now production is involved. It does make me sort of wonder, like, do they regret hiring her back now? Because, you know, having to deal with courts and paperwork and things of that nature, it has got to be annoying. You know what I'm saying? Especially considering that Andy Bandy had said to us or to the people that they had knew not of this good divorce when she indeed signed up. Okay. All right, so let's get into what the T is. Now, according to our friends over at the Neighborhood Talk via Radar Online, or I guess I should say Radar Online via Reality, uh, the Neighborhood Talk, Simon is reportedly wanting Portia to turn over all communications with Bravo producers regarding him and their divorce amid her return to the Real Housewives of Atlanta, okay? So basically, these court documents that are, you know, always just floating around in the atmosphere, okay? Uh, there must be some Toros in the atmosphere. Brrr, it's cold in here. There must be some paperwork in the atmosphere. I mean, literally, the paperwork is just flowing and flowing and flowing day after day after day after day. Anyway, he is giving Portia until April 4th. OK, to deliver a nice amount of documentation amid their nasty, bitter, sassy divorce. Now, he apparently wants her to turn over a copy of her passport, as well as copies of her payments from hotels and motels from January 20, 2024 until now. Not the motel. What is Portia doing in a motel? Now, I got to, hold on. So I, I need to understand, what is the difference between a hotel and a motel before I get to giggling? Because uh, I would expect um, Portia to be in the hotels, not the motels. Hotels and motels. I'm looking it up. And motels, okay. Motels are often found along highways and major roadways, while hotels are typically located in urban tourist areas. Oh, okay. The word motel comes from a blend of motor and hotel, typically implies a roadside hotel in which the doors of the rooms can be entered from the outside. In contrast, hotel rooms are typically entered from the inside of the building. Motels are often less expensive and have fewer accommodations than hotels. That's what I was getting at. What in the world would our Portia Warsha be doing down to the motel? I would expect for Portia to be expecting only the finest accommodations. You know what I'm saying? And this is no disrespect to the mo tell you know what i'm saying industry but it just ain't what i was expecting to read as i'm, I'm literally i didn't prepare nothing i saw the headline i was like oh this is gonna be fun to talk about let's see what they're getting into so as i'm reading it with y'all i am giving you my honest reaction okay anyway he's also requesting that the show that she show proof that she actually hired a bodyguard the day she popped up at their house with an armed person, okay? 
Then he wants her to turn over all the audio and video that she's recorded at their marital home from February 2024 until now. So I don't know if that means just the show or if that's security footage. I really don't know what all that includes. But they say most shockingly, Simon is requesting Portia to turn over all the communications she's had with True Entertainment, the parent company of Bravo. Simon wants anything Portia has sent them regarding him, their divorce, their prenup, and storylines as she prepares to return to the Real Housewives of Atlanta this coming season. The comment at the bottom reads, child, at this point, Simon might need his own peach, a plum, a piece of bubble gum. <laughs> Woo! I mean, listen. If I was production, I'd be a little bit, like, annoyed. Like, girl, we ain't even really got this thing started. Now, they could either be like, girl, what? Or they could be like, yes, B, because it could mean storyline. But the problem is, all of this is already playing out via social media. So what the story going to be? How she react to the other women reacting to this news? Like, I mean, it's given, we kind of seen this and done this before a little bit, you know? So y'all let me know what y'all think in the comment section down below. Um, is this a good thing or a bad thing for production? In my eyes, it's bad because who really want to be dealing with the court system amidst a bit of divorce where I got to now interrupt my business flow to be turning over, submitting documentations, and being subpoenaed possibly into the courts of law, okay? I just wouldn't feel like doing it. It might be more trouble than it's worth. But it could also mean ratings. Should there be more explosiveness that comes about as a result of this amongst the cast? All right, so let's get into some tea that kind of sort of gives us a little bit of an indication of where things stand post-reunion between Wendy and Ineka. Let's get into it with our friends over at Reality Chat, baby. They happen to pick up a bit of some fan question and answers with Ineka, as Giselle says. All right. So a commenter asked, do you think you and Wendy can ever move forward? And NECA responds, my love, I, already, I have already moved on. I've apologized for the things that I did that were unnecessary, but guilt has a funny way of not moving forward. Hmm. So basically what, I'm, what I feel like I'm hearing is, she feels like she apologized and she feels like Wendy is not able to move forward at all. You know, not being able to move forward can oftentimes be a sign that it is not going to work for the network. Um, I firmly believe that that was the reason why Dorinda was put on pause because she wasn't really able to move forward with Tinsley in her final season. But, you know, I could be wrong. I think that there may have been some other factors as well, but I really do feel that way. But then again, it doesn't necessarily feel like Giselle and Candace really moved on. But as we know, Candace has left. So I don't really know what to think. Let me know what you guys think. All right. Someone else says, I admire how fair and balanced you are. You seem to give your entire cast the benefit of the doubt. Was that a quality you always intended to bring on the show? She says, when I joined the cast, it was extremely fractured. People think I'm a GEB puppet. So that means green eyed bandit puppet. But no one considered that they accepted me when someone contaminated me from the other side, hated on me ostracized me and judged me due to my financial status, education, and upbringing. 
So my thought is now, well, girl, who was ostracizing you and judging you based on your financial status? If you rich, I mean, what is that to judge? You got the you got the coin, you got the house. I mean, was that all Wendy? I mean, does Ashley also not have a part to play in some of that contamination? You know what I'm saying? And I understand that there there were issues before and after, but I think that Ashley also added two okay so someone from the side that you find yourself on also had a part to play in that now, i'm not saying she was the only thing but i'm just saying that there was a little bit of sprinkle in there too so um i'm interested to see where things go with neca i say bring her back because you know i don't necessarily know that she was given the best introduction by production personally um, I do think that there could have been a better way to introduce her personal story before sort of injecting her so harshly into the drama that seemed so severe that it almost colored our opinions of who she is because we really didn't know her. All we knew was the drama surrounding her, right? So in my mind, let's give her another season. Let's see what she does. All right. So some fun news for y'all because these are some of my favorite shows. And if you guys have the Peacock app, thanks to our friends over at OMFG Reality TV um, from Bravo and the Bravo Daily Dish, we have just learned that several Bravo series are headed to Peacock on April 15th. And these are legacy Bravo series, okay? So, Blood, Sweat, and Heels seasons one and two are going to be on the Peacock. If you don't know, Blood, Sweat, and Heels was the show. Melissa Ford was on there. I mean, I don't know if you guys follow Demetria Lucas, um, who I think has since relocated to Ghana. But anyway, that show was so good. So good. I'm so mad it only lasted two seasons. but. With what happened in the end, I can see why. All right? Don't be tardy and all that if you like Kim Zosiak. But Married to Medicine Los Angeles, which I also felt like didn't get its just due, is now going to be on Peacock. All of these things are going to be on Peacock on April 15th. So you got your Million Dollar Decorator, Seasons 1 and 2, NYC Prep, Season 1, I don't remember that show, but a lot of people seem to remember and like it. I used to love the Rachel Zoe project. I'm super excited about this one, seasons one through five. They're going to have Real Housewives of Atlanta Candy's Wedding, season one. Real Housewives of D.C. is finally coming. Listen, y'all can say what y'all want. That show to me was lit. It was crazy. It was zany. It was insane how everything shook out. And I'm so mad that they did not do another season, right? Very different from Potomac, obviously. And it was also, of course, back several, several years ago. Like, so the dynamics of the show were a bit different. But man, it was interesting to me. All right. So uh, Karen's Grand Dame Reunion is going to be on there. Shaws of Sunset 1 through 9. I used to love Shaws of Sunset in the beginning. Tabitha Salon Takeover, y'all, seasons 1 through 3. I used to love that show. Then Tabitha Takes Over, which is seasons 4 through 5. And then Thicker Than Water, which I don't really recall what that was about. And then Top Shelf Just Desserts is, is going to be one, seasons 1 and 2. Y'all, these are some good shows. If you can't... Okay. Listen. I mean... Y'all, go watch that show. Go watch these shows, okay? Blood, Sweat, and Heels, if you ain't seen it. Rachel Zoe Project. Real Housewives of D.C. I'm talking Tabitha Salon Takeover. These are some of the best shows, okay? All right, so with that being said, listen, I just wanted to bring y'all the, the, the tea of it all today. Make sure you guys are tapped in, tuned in to 
the link here and the, the, the barcode here for my new book, The Wickedest Wives, book two, A Vicious Reality, is available for pre-order right now on the Amazon. Run down to the Amazon and go ahead and pre-order it, okay, before it comes out in May. It will be out in May. Book one is already out. You can get book one, catch up on that, or reread book one, catch up on that, and then dive right into book two, which picks up kind of where book one left off, okay? So that's all I'm going to give y'all for right now, but it'll be more information dropping on the book, that little teasers that we'll do as the weeks go by. So with that being said, I will catch you guys in the next video.